Well, <laughs> we get to meet again, and it's my pleasure and my privilege to be able to come into your presence by the means of this video and let you know I truly and have honestly prayed that God would use this time with you and me together <clears throat> and giving out some source of biblical truth and spiritual enlightenment to be able to help us. I trust it will. I'm going to be looking at 1 Corinthians 15 here in just a moment, and so if you'll turn to that, because it's vital that you see it with your eyes, especially because of the type of a message that I'm going to be preaching right now. And go, to go along with that message as well, I want you to understand this. We can pray, believe, and receive, or we can pray, doubt, and do without. I'm going to emphasize on this message, <clears throat> this matter, to believe and receive. My title of my message is simple, but I think very strongly emphasized. And here's the message. Believe and be saved or doubt and be damned. Did you get it? It's so vital and so important because these are words that are acquainted and accustomed in our particular uh, belief as far as the Bible and salvation and, and serving and so forth our God. But believe and be saved. Now that's a statement that's right out of the Word of God, but believe and be saved. But here's another statement that is also inferred in the Word of God. And that is, doubt and be damned. Doubt and be damned. Now what is it to believe? Let me just give you a little bit brief of a definition, and you already know it, but I want you to be reminded of it. Believe, to believe is to accept without doubt something that is true. Now, don't miss that statement right there because that is, that's vital for your eternity. The definition of believe is to accept without doubt something or someone that is true. In other words, it means to have total confidence and trust in the revealed truth. Again, please let that land on the depths of your heart that to believe is to have total confidence and total trust in the revealed truth. And of course, our revealed truth is the Word of God the Bible, the old King James Bible. And here's what it says. I'm going to talk to you about believing the gospel, so I want you to listen to me and listen to me very carefully because it could be that your own soul is dependent on what I'm going to tell you today. But definitely those that you would be able to talk to, witness to, even your own family members, your own loved ones, your own mate, husband, or wife, or your children, or whatever, believing is the secret of being saved, but you must believe in the revealed truth, and the revealed truth is the Bible, and the revealed truth that we need to believe is the gospel. Now let me just read something to you. And it, this is all, this is nothing new, but it's something that needs to be emphasized over and over and over again. Hold on now. Here's 1 Corinthians 15, verse number 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. So we're going to find out what the gospel is. He's going to declare it to us. I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received. Remember what the definition is. To accept without doubt, receive without doubt. Which you have received and wherein you stand. In other words, you stand on what I've preached 
about what the gospel is because you've accepted it and you trust it and you are believing it. And if you believe it, as I said, you're saved. But if you doubt, you're damned. Then the Apostle Paul goes on and says this about the gospel. By which also ye are saved if, if, you mean that's conditional? Yeah, you're saved if you keep in memory what I have preached unto you unless you have believed in vain. In other words, if you have believed but have doubts. Oh my God, this is important. Lord, help us to get this truth embedded in the depths of our heart because a lot of people who are making professions of being saved are not saved. But salvation is very easy. But you have to believe to be saved. Otherwise, if you doubt, you're damned. Now hold on. Listen to this. He goes on to say, For I which I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. In other words, Paul said, I believed and I, I'm giving to you what I was received and I believed. And he says, here's number one, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. You have to believe the Bible is the Word of God. The Scriptures are the Word of God. <clears throat> and, the, and, the, and the Scriptures tell us that Christ died for our sins. Now, ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. Hold on now. Do you believe that? Do you really believe that Christ came from heaven, born of a virgin, grew up to be 33 years old, died on the cross, and took the wrath of God and the punishment and shed His pure blood so that we could be saved? Look what Paul said. Listen to what he said here. First of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins. Do you believe that? you believe Christ died for our sins? Now, it's according to the Scriptures. Now, here's the second thing of the Gospel. And that he was buried. In other words, they wrapped him in the Jewish custom of burial, but putting the spices on his body, wrapped him in the linen, put him in that tomb of Joseph, and they buried him. They put him in, they rolled a big stone in front of where they took him in at, and then they came out, rolled the stone in front of the tomb. They buried him. He's dead. He died for our sins. So he's buried. And Paul says that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. <laughs> now, do you believe that? Do you believe a man that can be dead for three days, not draw one breath, not see one sight, not smell one odor, not be able to hear one sound, not be able to speak one word, not have one drop of blood flowing through his veins, that he is dead, totally, completely lifeless, dead. Do you believe that? That's the second part of the gospel that he was, number one, crucified and died for our sins. Number two, after that, he was buried in the tomb, dead for three days. And then it says in that same verse, thank God for this truth, that he rose again the third day. Listen, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. So here's what the gospel is. Christ died for our sins, number one. Do you believe that? He was buried dead. For three days he was in that grave dead. Do you believe that? And thirdly, after the third day at God's timing, God raised him from the dead. Life came back into him. He came right up out of those grave clothes and stepped out of that tomb and was witnessed, as Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15 here, by many as up to 500 different people saw him alive after the three days that he was dead. Do you believe that? Well, I'm telling you now and I want you to hear me out because this is awesome. This is true. 
It is not hard to be saved, and it is not hard to believe. The gospel in its, listen to me now, the gospel in its simplest form is found through the pages of God's divine book, as the Bible calls them here, the scriptures. The gospel so simple, yet so powerful. The gospel is so simple, yet so needed. The gospel is so simple, yet so neglected. The gospel is so simple, yet so misunderstood. The gospel is so simple, yet, praise God, so wonderful. The simple and the simplicity that God has made us, the gospel, to believe is both powerful, it's needed, even though it's neglected and misunderstood, but it's the most wonderful thing that can ever happen to anybody. Its simplicity is found in such verses as, as most of our favorite, John 3.16. You know it. You could quote it with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have, present tense, for eternity, have everlasting life. Thank God for John 3.16. But John 3.16 is not the only place that makes it simple. Here's the simplicity. Listen to this. I want you to get it because this is important, first of all, for you to, 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 to examine your own self, but secondly, for you to be able to witness to others by giving them something that's very simple that anybody, even a child, can understand. Listen to the John chapter 5 here and listen to verse number 24. Verily, verily, which means truly, truly, of a truth, and we're to believe the truth, I say unto you, he that heareth my word, the scriptures, he that heareth my word, now watch it, and believeth on him that has sent me. Hear the word, believe. Hear the word, believe. Believe is what? As I told you in the very beginning, it's that matter of trusting, accepting the truth. And, and believeth him to sent me. What does he have? Listen to this. You hear the word, you believe, and then he says in John 5, 24, hath everlasting life. You have it. Everlasting life. How long is everlasting? How long is everlasting? If you have something that's everlasting, you can't lose something that's everlasting because it's everlasting. Everlasting life. Now watch this. I want you to get it because it'll, it'll deal in your own heart. And shall not come into condemnation because Jesus died for your sins. You, if you believe on him, you will never be condemned for your sins because that would be a double judgment. That means Christ died for them, and now you have to die for them. Christ was judged for them, now you have to be judged for them. Christ was condemned for them, and now you have to be... No, 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 no. You believe, you have everlasting life, and you'll never be condemned. My soul, what a message, what a gospel, what a truth. And then it goes on to say in that same verse, and shall not come into condemnation, but is past passed from death where Christ was where we were before we were saved passed from death unto life life what? everlasting life eternal how simple it is to be saved all you have to do according to that scripture is believe yeah believe trust accept Here's something else. Listen to this verse in John chapter 6, a page over. I love this too. In fact, I love the whole Bible. 
But he said, I, but here's what it says in verse 36. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. He's talking to those that were the unbelievers. But watch what he says here. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me. And him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. So if you've ever come to him believing that he died for your sins, that he was buried, and that he rose again, and you believe that and you trust that, then you come to him and he will in no wise. In other words, regardless of what you ever do or regardless of whatever happens or regardless of whatever's in the future, he will in no wise, in any way, for anything, ever cast you out. You're in for good. That's eternal security. Thank God. Now listen to this verse right in this same chapter. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he, watch this now, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the simplicity of the gospel is given to us right there, which simply means believe. Believe and you're going to be saved. Doubt and you're going to be damned. Because belief and doubt cannot go hand in hand. You've got to believe. You've got to trust. You've got to accept. You got to have it instilled and installed in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, buried and rose again. It's so simple to be saved. You know how God made it so simple? Let me, let me just tell you this. Now listen to me. I'm just going to have a little bit of fun here to get you to think with me a little bit. Here's how simple it is to be saved. Jesus said, I am the door. Oh, so how simple is salvation? There's a door. Jesus said, I am the door. So if I walk through that door, if I walk through the faith in Christ that he died, buried, and rose again, since he's the door, he said he would save me. He said, I am the door. I am the door to life. So not only does he make it simple to even give us an illustration about a door, that if you enter into a door, you're in. If you enter into a door, you're in. And Jesus is the door and you're in. Believe it. It's simple. Then not only that, but Jesus said this. Jesus said, salvation is as simple as drinking water. And we all do. But he uses that illustration just to show the simplicity of salvation. It's as easy as drinking water. That's why he said, I am the water of life. I am the water of life. So how is it to drink a glass of water? That's how easy it is to be saved. Because he said, I'm not only the door, I'm the water. Then you go into your scripture and you're going to find, he said, I am the bread of life. So if you eat toast in the morning or if you have a piece of bread at a, at a meal and you eat a piece of bread, how, e how easy is that? And by the way, how delicious is that? But how easy is it to eat a piece of bread? That's how easy it is to get saved because he said, I'm the bread of life. Walk through a door, I'm the door. Drink a glass of water, I'm the water of life. Eat a piece of bread, I'm the bread of life. Then he said, go over and turn on, on the wall a little switch called your light switch and turn on the light and the lights come on. How easy is salvation? Jesus said, I am the light. I am the light. So it's as easy as switching the switch to turn on the light to be saved. That's how easy salvation has been made by God. Here's something else. Springtime or any time, and even in my backyard right now, I've got some roses out there growing. I can go out there and smell. Just take a whiff and say, oh my goodness, that smells so good. <laughs> Jesus said, yeah, that's how easy salvation is. Because he said, I'm the rose of Sharon. I'm not only the door, I'm the water. I'm not only the door and the water, I'm the bread. I'm not only the door, the water, and the bread, I'm the light. I'm not only the light, but I am the 
Rose of Sharon, I'm the flower. How easy it is to smell a flower. That's how easy it is to be saved. That's how easy it is to believe. That's how easy salvation is. You want to know something else? Jesus said this, I am the Alpha, that's the beginning, and Omega, that's the end. So how easy is salvation? Salvation is easy as you say in the alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and so forth. So salvation is as easy and as simple as walking through a door, drinking a glass of water, eating a piece of bread, turning on the light, smelling a flower, and quoting the alphabet. I'm trying to tell you something right now, and that is the gospel of Christ and salvation has been made simple so that anybody and all could ever be saved. He did not make it hard. Salvation has been made possible for the smallest boy to understand, for the smallest girl to understand, for the oldest person in the universe to understand. God has made salvation simple for anybody to understand. Even those that are mentally retarded that have some kind of sense that they can think. Salvation is simple. They can understand it. The most intelligent scientist can understand it. The most educable slow person can understand it. The most influential person in the world, whoever that may be, can understand it. The most down and outer, those that are homeless, those that are in the gutter, those that are down and out, can understand it. Those that are moral or maybe even religious can understand it. Even a disgusting, wicked, vile sinner of our society can understand the gospel. Why? Because they can understand how to walk through a door. They can understand how to drink water. They can understand. God has made it simple. So simple. How to be saved has been so diluted. The gospel plan in the minds of the average American is so complicated, nearly no one, no one understands it. Here's what's happened. Theologians have complicated it. They have not done us any good. Theologians have added things to their own thoughts and placed them in their commentaries and so forth. They have complicated it. Denominations have rearranged it to their own religious ways. New Bibles, all the different versions, have confused it. Oh yeah, just listen to me. Preachers have so added to it, the common man is hesitant to accept it because they just cannot understand it. I'm simply trying to tell you something. Ladies and gentlemen, it is still the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. To everyone that believeth. The power of God unto salvation to everyone. Everyone that believeth. The greatest need today in our country and in our churches is to return to the simple preaching of the gospel that is a simple gospel that anybody can understand. And God made it that way. We have sidestepped it. We're trying to change man and our society by changing their environment. That's not the way to be saved. We try to change not only their environment, but we try to educate them according to what we believe and our education. And we've become so educated, we, uh, we have no need of God or His, ba uh, or his book. Or, uh, or, uh, in other words, we need to kick out our education, even some of our colleges. I was taught when I went to Bible college what they call Calvinism. And Calvinism is defined by the word tulip. If you're a Calvinist, you believe, here's the tulip, total depravity, unconditional election, limited atonement, irresistible grace, and perseverance of the saints. Well, let me just first of all say that the unconditional election? No. No. Now God, it's unconditional sinners can be saved for sure. 
But the next one, the L stands for limited atonement? That Christ only died for the elect? No. He died for the world. The Bible's very clear in saying that. He died for the sins of the world. Who's in the world? Everybody that's ever been alive. It's not limited to just a select few. It's, I mean, an irresistible grace? I've preached long enough to know that the Spirit of God has dealt with people with conviction through the preaching of the Word, and they have resisted it and have not been saved. So that matter of Calvinism and their tulip is far from being Bible truth. So I'm simply trying to tell you something. And what I'm trying to tell you is that we have been so educated to believe certain things that if we don't do it this way and that way and so forth, if we, if we do it the Bible way, we're safe. But if we do it what somebody else is trying to educate us to do or not to do, it could be wrong. I mean, we're even trying to change man through our governmental programs, as you know today. Have you noticed we pass laws, even new laws, every day, and yet sin abounds more and more? Have you noticed that? It's true. The whole world lies in wickedness and lawlessness. You can't reform man. He must be transformed. You can't. Listen, you cannot reform him. He's got to be transformed. Here, listen to this. Man was formed by God. Right? Yeah, true. Man was formed by God. Then man was deformed by the devil. Come on now, listen to me. We were formed by God, but we were then deformed by the devil. But when we believed, we were transformed by Christ. And now, because we have the Bible, we are conformed by His Holy Spirit and informed by the Scriptures. What a great truth. My goodness. I'm telling you, it is awesome what God has done for us. How simple is it to be saved? The simple plan of salvation is the need of this hour. Just believe. Trust. Accept. Don't doubt. If God said it, it's true. If it's in the inspired Bible, it's true. The gospel still can make drunk men sober. It can make crooked men straight. It can make thieves honest. It can make lazy people workers. It can make harlots pure, wholesome women. It can make dirty and clean and useful men. It can make, make hard and, and, and uh, people uh, that are hard make them soft. I mean, hardened sinners to be softened saints. I've seen it for years. But if you believe, you're saved. But if you doubt, you're damned. Salvation is simple. How simple is it, you ask? Remember the Philippian jailer? The Apostle Paul? And they were in the jail singing songs. The earthquake happened as an answer to their prayer and singing their songs. And the jailer came out and was going to kill himself. And Paul said, no, do thyself no harm. And the jailer said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Oh, you have to be baptized, or you have to join a church, or you have to do this religious act. No, that's not what they said. What must I do to be saved? Believe. Believe what? On the Lord Jesus Christ. That He died for our sins. That He was buried. And that He rose again. And thou shalt be saved. And then He added this. And thy house. You can have your whole house saved to believe the same thing. Paul didn't tell the man to quit his drinking. He didn't tell, uh, tell that man to quit uh, sinning first or stop smoking or stop his adultery or stop his lying or stealing or cussing or drinking. I believe those things will stop 
after a man believes and gets saved. Are you listening to me? I'm talking to some people right now that you, you have doubt. You go to bed wondering sometimes, are you really saved? You'll commit some sin and you'll think, man, can a, sin, can a, a saved person do that sin? Well, let me just tell you something. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. You will have eternal life. And if you have something that is eternal, how can you lose that which is eternal? In God's name, let common sense speak. You don't need to ever doubt. If you believe the gospel, then you are saved. He is the answer for our souls. He's the answer for our country. He's the answer for our churches. He's the answer for our families. He's the answer for society. He is all in all. Man's greatest need is the need of Christ as their Savior. Listen, He'll change your life. He'll change your eternity. He'll give you something to live for. He will give you joy and happiness that you have longed for. He will rob your heart and mind of worry. Why? Because Jesus is the answer. And you must come to the realization that if you believe, you're saved. But if you doubt the scriptures and doubt the gospel, if you doubt the truth, you're lost. How simple is it to go to heaven? Belief. How simple is it to go to heaven? Simple as going through a door. How simple is it going, going to heaven? Simple as drinking a glass of water. How simple is it to go to heaven? Simple as eating a piece of bread. How simple is it to go to heaven? Simple as turning on a light switch and turning the light on. You know what I'm trying to tell you? Jesus died for your sins. He was buried. He rose again. Believe and you'll be saved. Doubt, and you'll be damned. Thank you for tuning in. God bless you.